Rick, I think before we segue to the Reddit questions, I think we should bring up the question about uh, Open Bazaar. I don't know if you wanted to um, you talk about that because one of the common themes in the podcast is when mass adoption and a lot of people that are investors or we see you in Telegram, you're worried about living within the system and being able to spend your ADA on everyday products and services. While we're probably a distance away from that, uh, we would like to bring up one of the projects that Dionysis worked on, co-founded, and Rick has a story about that as well. So I don't know. Rick, did you want to introduce that? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Philippe. I will. Um, so a little bit of background. So Wikipedia is an example of decentralized governance, centralized technology. Facebook would be a good example. And these came up in um, Dionysis' article on Medium. Facebook's an example of centralized power and control decentralized servers. Now, Open Bazaar is a good example of decentralized technology and decentralized governance. And my homework assignment today is to look into it further because Open Bazaar is it's a sales, it's available online sales place that Dionysus can tell us more about. But last night, what I did is I downloaded it uh, because we, I was doing my research and I, I found the Open Bazaar information and that you, you co-founded it. And I said, well, wow, what does this technology do? Because what happened when I was at Plutus Fest, I leaned over to Sebastian. I was seeing all this cool technology. And he said, hey, Sebastian, is this technology capable of making a decentralized eBay or decentralized Amazon? And Sebastian's response was, he said, well, you should look into Open Bazaar. And I thought, well, that's a bizarre response. I don't know what to do with that. And I didn't realize what he was telling me at the time. And then I looked up, I was like, oh, yesterday I said, that's what Sebastian was talking about. I looked up Open Bazaar. And a really good example is I, I loaded the server. I started running software. And then I turned to my wife and my wife makes crafts. She makes things like Christmas tree ornaments um, for sale at craft shows and for sale at yard sales. And or, for, or she gives them away to family members and gives them away to friends. And I looked at this and I said, we, we have four Christmas trees worth of Christmas ornaments. Nobody has four Christmas trees. And I'm like, wow, you know, you could sell these in Open Bazaar. And I showed it to my wife. My wife is not super high tech, but she gets it. And as soon as she looked at the Open Bazaar running on my computer that I just installed last night, she said, oh, wow, that's neat. Because there's two things she gets. I can sell my products and I can collect my little bits of Bitcoin or Litecoin or whatever money is transferred on Open Bazaar. So we thought that was really cool. So Dionysius, Dionysius if you could uh, just tell us a little bit more about Open Bazaar and how that technology works and how it's both uh, governance decentralized and technologically decentralized. Right. So Open Bazaar is, uh, is a project that I think has been the vision of a lot of people in the, in the space. It's something that we have wanted for a very long time. Um, and in fact, um, I think even uh, Satoshi Nakamoto envisioned something like this, uh, looking at his first code contributions. He had some ideas around that um, until he discovered, you know, making a marketplace and a cryptocurrency is going to be a lot of work. So he decided not to do just one and leave the rest of us to do the other. Um, so uh, Open Bazaar is uh, an open marketplace. It's a decentralized marketplace. Um, as you said, it's similar to eBay in the sense that you can go on it and create a store and sell your things, uh, maybe also similar to Etsy in that manner. Um, and then you can also go online and search for products and buy them. And you can use cryptocurrency to do that. In contrast to eBay or Amazon, this is not run by a central company. It's not a website. So what you do is you download a program, a computer program, you install it on your computer, and then you can use that to browse for products or to upload your own products and then get paid. Um, the, the main difference is that there is no servers. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network in which um, people really do own their stores and people are responsible for their uh, trades with other people. Um, so in that sense, it's, let's say the, um, well, let's say that it is, that Open Bazaar is for eBay what uh, Bitcoin is to fiat currencies. Um, so um, it has the nice properties of decentralization. It cannot be shut down. It cannot be censored. Um, 
it cannot be subpoenaed to give away the private data of all its users. Uh, if anyone wants to shut down, or if a government wants to sh shut down a store, they have to go to the store owner. Um, so this is the reason why uh, we called it Open Bazaar as well. Uh, it's, a, it's like a bazaar, uh, like in the old times, where you know you could go to an open market and you know, set up your stand and sell things. And if somebody wanted to shut you down, they would have to come to you, uh, not to, let's say, the mall owner um, or the eBay owner. So in that sense, it's uncensorable, and um, it, it basically is an autonomous system. It um, survives on its own and it runs on its own. Even if we wanted to shut it down as developers, uh, we, we couldn't do it at this stage. So that's the gist of it. And um, I think it makes a lot of sense to, for people. So in, in the same way that you, know, um, you can present the Bitcoin software as a, as a wallet, um, where you, you, know, you keep your money in it, uh, in that same way, uh, Open Bazaar can be presented, you know, as your little store, online store, where you can sell your things and um, you know, receive money from others or use it to access this network of other stores. So I think this is a message that can be easily communicated to newcomers. And hopefully, if Open Bazaar does catch on, and there's there's still a lot of work to be done there, um, I think maybe hopefully it can even be used to onboard new users to cryptocurrency as well um, because it just makes a lot of sense you know you have a lot of, you have a store and you sell things and then you get paid in this new kind of money and now you can learn about this new form of money as well by the way thank you for that that's a good explanation i'm going to look into it further uh, it's very neat and you know something that that it, there's a saying buyers beware that applies to whether something is centralized or decentralized for example craigslist is centralized etsy was a good example that's what my wife was familiar with was etsy and it's always buyer beware whether using the open bazaar or craigslist or etsy or ebay because um, in open bazaar someone can make a purchase and i don't know all that much about it yet i'm going to learn more about it but if i buy something from another person and i send them my bitcoin there is always the threat that i don't get my product that i sent the money for but there's like user ratings where other people that interacted with that person can say, yes, that was, I had a successful interaction. Each user is also responsible for establishing their own reputation uh, because if they received money, they got to send that product that they sold and other users can evaluate how well the, their interaction was. Yes. So this is a really hard question and it's, a, it's actually an open research question to solve this correctly. Um, Open Mozart does have a, a reputation system. You can uh, rate other users. You can leave reviews uh, for for products. You can put stars on on products, and uh, there's other mechanisms to prevent you from uh, fraud and theft as well. Uh, one mechanism is to lock up your money in an uh, an arbiter's um, account, like a, a two of three, let's say, uh, account, a, a multi-sig account. So uh, what you would do there, or you can think of it as, you know, your money is being locked. So you pay for the product. It's the money is locked up. The vendor can see that you locked up the money. So you no longer have the money. And then the vendor uh, is ensured that you've basically given up your money. So they can now send the product. And then when you receive the product, you can say, okay, I got the product. I can now finalize um, that trade. And then they can receive their money. If they don't send me the product, they don't get any money, but also I cannot get the product without paying first. So that's the first basic idea that we implement there. Uh, and this is already part of Open Bazaar as it is. Um, there is also a system of um, arbitration where um, if something goes wrong, we can contact an arbiter, uh, which we uh, we have both elected together to, um, to, to decide what happens in the case there's a dispute. Um, so this is the the basic open system right now. However, the the question of decentralized identity and reputation is uh, really unsolved yet. I, I would say it's maybe maybe the most important question right now in decentralized space, or one of the most important ones. Uh, and it, it it comes down to you know how do you collect reputation for uh, an identity that is anonymous uh, because one of the problems that exists in this kind of systems is that uh, they can be Sybil attacked. So um, 
uh, an account can or, or a malicious user can create multiple accounts and vote positively for themselves. Um, and in the case of eBay, let's say, um, well, eBay uses some proprietary technology, which is secret to protect against such attacks. You know, they look at your IP, maybe they, they register your mobile phone. They use some secret machine learning to look at what you're doing and detect anomalies. And then, you know, if you have well, 1000 accounts, they can ban you. And then they change these algorithms often because people uh, often figure out what's going on there. Um, how, however, in decentralized systems where we want a more robust way of working in which we can prove that these things are impossible and we don't want to rely on security through obscurity. We don't want to rely on closed source code and closed source methods. We need to develop a system where these attacks are really provably impossible. So we want, we want systems where the reputation cannot be gamed and it cannot be increased artificially by you know, creating a script that votes for yourself. Um, so this question is something that we are, um, we have been trying to answer for a while now, and it's it's a line of research which is called trust is risk, uh, which you also mentioned when you introduced me. Um, that's uh, that's a project um, that I'm working on with uh, one of my collaborators, or Orfeas Litos, and we have a paper on that as well that appeared in Financial Crypto a couple of years ago, and it details some of the ideas we have on how to solve that. We think we think it can be solved. And um, actually we do also have an implementation of that that is uh, in the form of a library, which can be used for from OpenBazaar or from another project. And um, as far as I understand, OpenBazaar does uh, intend to incorporate that uh, into their reputation system at some point. Um, but really this is a central piece that can sit at the heart of many decentralized systems. Um, to, to solve the question of, you know, is this anonymous, pseudonymous identity trustworthy? Can I trust them with my products? Can I trust them with the money? Can I trust them to send me, you know, a, a torrent file that is not spam? Um, or can I trust them to send me search results in a decentralized search engine that, it, that are not ads and they're not spammy, right? So all these questions revolve around the question of uh, decentralized identity. So I think very central piece and it's actually also very difficult.